this tutorial is going to be about uh, a little bit about the Sketcher workbench and uh, a little bit of the Revolve tool from the Part Design workbench. And I've chosen to model a bicycle rim. Um, so I've just been online, done a Google image search for a bicycle rim. I'm going to base it on the DT Swiss 5.1 rim, uh, which this is a profile of here. Um, it's going to be similar to this, but not the, s uh, not the same. So, quick Google search. I found some tech specs for the DT Swiss 5.1 rim. The critical number here is the ETRTO, the 559 by 21. If we look online, uh, here's a description of it. The first number is the width of the tire, so that 21 is the the width here, the inner rim width. And the second number is the bead seat diameter, so the diameter from where the, the tire bead seats on the rim. So knowing a few numbers like this, we can we can create a fairly accurate representation of a uh, of a mountain bike rim. Okay, and as for the version number of FreeCAD. Um, using a daily build, so it's 4689. Yeah, I mean, um, as I said in a previous uh, video, uh, the daily builds are available from the website. So I'm going to start a new document in the Part Design Workbench. Jump straight into Create a New Sketch, XY Plane again. Turn off auto constraints. I'm going to set the grid size to 1 mil because the rim width is 21 mil. So it's more conducive to the rim width. And I'm just going to roughly copy this rim. I'll start by only looking at half of it. And for this I'm going to use the polyline tool. So I'm just basically sketching out the rough shape. Escape to finish using the tool. Just highlight that, press delete. So once I've got half the profile, I use the polyline tool again and just roughly try and create the other half as well as I can. Okay, so this is a fairly complex piece of geometry now. Uh, there's 68 degrees of freedom, there's a lot of lines, there's symmetry about the y-axis, and uh, again, uh, FreeCAD is still in uh, development, and it sometimes crashes quite a bit, and when there's a, a sketch with this many degrees of freedom and this many lines, it may have problems, so... It's just a case of perseverance, really, and saving it very often. Um, so I may have to skip forward in time uh, for the purposes of keeping this video um, short and to the point. So, just start by trying to sort out the geometry. Oh, and uh, if I 
let's create a line. I'm just going to create a construction line. Make it vertical. And coincident with the y axis. And if I left click on it and choose toggle to or from construction mode, I can turn it into a construction line. Set these lines about the uh, coincident with the y axis. These points, rather. And now, as I say, as this is mirrored about the y axis, I will mirror all of these points. So I select the point, the construction line and its mirrored point and then I click on create a symmetry constraint between two points with respect to a line I'm just going to do this going around the outside of the shape for all of the points It gets a bit fiddly. Okay. Right. I'm going to set this line horizontal. I'll make this whole area perpendicular, so either horizontal or vertical. There's no need to do the other side, of course, because it's mirrored. Right. Vertical distance of all of these points. Um, set that to zero, so that when we use the revolve tool, as you'll see in a minute, uh, we know which point we're starting from uh, cause, because it revolves relative to the x-axis so if we've got one point touching the x-axis um, we can control the accuracy of the, the revolution that we produce vertical constraint. I'll make that relative with a distance constraint. I'll make these two a fixed distance and this point can be vertical here. Okay, so going back to the definition the inner rim width is a critical number and for a 5.1 rim that's 21 mil so because it's mirrored again I'm only doing one side so I'm going to need minus Twenty one mil. Okay. Just alter everything to suit. Just have a look at the rim. to me. 
widget. set these no that's wrong I'm going to set these two lines parallel that's this button ok same with these and these oh, I need to set another constraint on the construction line just a length constraint, almost forgot that <laughs> otherwise we would have ended up with one degree of freedom left at the end ok uh, so yeah uh, there's still a lot of degrees of freedom left uh, as I say it's a very complicated sketch and it's just a matter of being patient and yeah, just taking a methodical approach to constraining it. Okay, I'm gonna have to just delete that. I set these two lines to equal length. Add the parallel constraint again. The uh, mirror constraint rather. set the angles what I thought. Uh, so any occasion where you have conflicting constraints you've obviously got to delete one of the constraints uh, to s fix the situation. So I think because these two lines are parallel and because one of them is already angle constrained I don't need this secondary angle constraint. So 8 degrees of freedom nearly there, nearly done. the geometry around again. I can still move. Six.
three degrees of freedom remaining and it's going to be hard to find them One. Ah, it's the construction line. <laughs> right, that's it. Uh, another fully constrained sketch. That's exactly what we wanted.